the date that I've been looking forward to for the last year, which is when I, I became part of the Consumer Youth Forum. Before, I was a member of the Consumer Youth Forum in Carrefour, on one side of the table. And before, I was a member on the other side of the table at Prague and Gamma. Let me tell you, it is great to see both sides. They are so complementary. Actually, you learn a lot. Now I'm in the third corner of the consumer goods industry. In the infotech, analytics, big data. One thing I'm going to tell you. I wish I knew when I was there what I know now. This presentation is a little bit about that. Three things in the agenda. First one, why is it important for you? Second one, we'll have a case study, a real case study with Tiger Brands here in South Africa. The third one <coughs> is what is next? What is the future? How are you going to win? So let me go straight to the first one. Why is it important for you? Three reasons. The first one, globally, in every market, when you ask your shoppers why they shop in your store, they will answer, apart from convenience, meaning it's close home, because of the assortment. It's a universal trend. Assortment will bring customers to your stores. The second reason, guys, we have a problem. This industry has a problem. Look at the numbers. The number of listed products in the price lists in the US is almost 1 billion SKUs. The average number of SKUs in a supermarket is 9,000. So, to host all the SKUs that you have in the price lists in the US, you will need a supermarket that is 1,000 times bigger. Now imagine shopping in that supermarket. That is what I call hell. And the third reason, sorry, this is the number that I was talking. And the third reason is actually because reality is not getting easier. Reality is getting more complex. You have all the e-commerce and the pure players, and actually a mixture of both. And then you have brick and mortars that get together with pure players, like Morrison's with Amazon in the UK. And brick and mortars that are playing like pure players with the click and collect. So we have a complex reality, and we are making it even more complex. So what is happening? Is the logical thing. Retailers are reducing their assortment. Mm. In the UK, in 2015, on average, the supermarkets decreased almost 5% the SKUs. So to summarize, what is your problem? Three problems. The first problem is the retailers. You know, they're saying, hey, my shelf cannot extend more. And on top, I need the space for my private label. Thank you very much. The second problem, your competition. You know, it's a, like a prisoner's dilemma. No matter if you stop putting line extensions, your competitor may not. In the last year, only in the UK, we introduced, you introduced, 1,300 new brand innovations. In Germany, in 2015, an average supermarket changed 15% of the assortment. And the third problem is the consumer. They are getting more savvy. We are getting more savvy. We are getting smarter. Actually, 84% of the consumers that go shopping and have a smartphone, they use it. 
and not necessarily to go their ways. So with this, I want to introduce Brenda, that will take us through uh, the uh, case study that we have here in uh, South Africa with Tiger Birds. Brenda. Thank you very much, JC. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it really is an honor to, to be here today. Before I speak about the case study there, I would just like to assist our previous speaker, Christoph Beck from Ecolab, who did not know what we call a cab or a taxi in South Africa. The answer is neither. We call them Isolas or Isola Butts, who was our gold medal winning athlete in the Olympics a number of years ago. And the reason we call our taxis Isolas is because they are the fastest drivers in the entire world. <laughs> So Christoph, next time you need a taxi, you call an Isola. So I would just like to kick off with um, saying that um, probably the South African team actually understands who uh, Tiger Brands is, but for our international visitors, Tiger Brands is a company that was established in South Africa in 1921. Today, we are one of the top 40 companies on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. We operate across several categories in the consumer goods uh, space. And in most of those categories, we have the leading position. In fact, for the major retailers in South Africa, we are the number one customer in the foods grocery business. Um, we own, uh, lucky enough to own many leading brands which help us to be the number one in these categories. And over the past several years, we have started to expand our operations across Africa. And today you will find Tiger Brands products in more than 22 countries on the African continent. So JC um, spoke about the key issues that manufacturers or challenges that manufacturers face in the retailer space. And I think he summed them up extremely accurately. Um, for anybody in the manufacturing business, you will recognize each one of those challenges when you go to the retailer to talk about new products, the existing range, the justification for space on the retailer shelf. But in addition to the challenges that we face in the retailer space, we also have internal problems which result from poor assortment management and assortment complexity. And these relate to poor execution on shelf. It relates to low marketing investment per SKU that you are actually selling. It obviously translates into low procurement scale and because of high complexity in the manufacturing space, also a higher cost base. One ends up with a heavy organization and ultimately this is an inhibitor to both growth and to profits. And so we really have been learning the hard way that the alternative to having the skew complexity is through better SKU management and focus on fewer SKUs. And obviously that translates into exactly the opposite. An ability to better execute on shelf, to have the advantages of manufacturing and procurement efficiencies, to have a leaner organization, and ultimately what we're all trying to aim for, which is higher growth and better profitability. So as an example, um, in the summer of 2014, we um, are the leader in liquid concentrate beverages with a brand called Oros. And we made a decision to cut the skews from seven down to three skews. So we actually got rid of four of the Oros skews in the marketplace. The result was definitely an internal benefit of less complexity in the manufacturing space, which led to improved profitability in its own right. But most significantly, the result in the summer of 2014 
was that we actually saw a volume growth of 18% for ORAS um, in the retail space and a value growth of more than 23%. Thanks to the fact that we had fewer, more productive SKUs on the retailer shelf. Um, and that's the kind of great experience of focused management that has led us down this path of really trying to manage the uh, focus of our SKUs. So the case study that I would like to speak to you about was a case study that we did in partnership with IRI. Um, we operate in the spreads category where we are a leader in the peanut butter space. We're also a leader in the jam um, category. Now, the problem we were facing is that the jam category, of which we owned more than 60%, was an extremely static category. For a number of years, we had not seen any growth at all. We were operating with three brands, All Gold, which is the market leader, and has variants in both the mainstream segment as well as in the premium segment. Then we have Hugo Jam, which is uh, positioned in the value for money or economy space of the market. And then we have Koo, which is a number one brand in South Africa, but in the jam space had a relatively small market share and was also positioned in the mainstream sector. The difficulty for us was that Koo um, also had quite significant market share in certain geographic regions and in certain retailers. And so we had a real fundamental question of what is the best assortment management and how could we kickstart more growth in the jazz category. So our burning question was number one, how do we drive growth? Um, both in the category, um, on behalf of the retailers, certainly how do we drive growth for Tiger Brands? How do we understand what is the best assortment to manage and particularly so for the different retailers. Then we had a question which said um, growth through innovation, but what opportunity is there for a new product idea that we had and how would that impact and cannibalize some of our other brands and SKUs? And then finally, what were the product attributes? And I think this is the particularly fascinating part of the um, assortment tool which RRI offers is how do you recognize which attributes of the different product offerings would actually most greatly contribute to increased sales? So to complicate the question even further, the analysis that we had done was that the different retailers had a different assortment of SKUs. So some retailers focused more on the economy sector and the mainstream sector to other retailers, there was also quite a significant premium jam segment. So how do you find the best assortment for each of the different retailer um, shoppers? So we could have gone the traditional approach, which honestly is what we did with the ORAS example. But in this case, we actually said, let us try and understand this better. And the assortment tool which IRI brought us, um, this is in 20, at the end of 2014, actually gave us the capability of understanding which product attributes would best relate to SKU assortment. We could do that at a store level, obviously clustered up into different retailers, and then do this also on a dynamic basis to understand how the one would actually impact on the, on the other. And the great tool that this um, attribute analysis gives you is that you can actually start identifying which products and which attributes will give you the unique capability to actually add incremental sales rather than just having a new SKU or an existing SKU on the shelf, which is interchangeable with either our own or with competitor um, brands. And so what we were able to do through the study was to identify how um, and which attributes of our current brands as well as the new products that we had in mind would actually translate into incremental sales. In other words, it would offer the shopper 
unique attributes that the shopper was looking for and not those attributes which are already existing um, from other products that already sit on the shelf. Um, so one of the first parts of the analysis um, showed us how the different shoppers in the different retailers uh, because each of our retailers in South Africa are quite uniquely positioned with their own target markets, and how the shoppers were looking for different attributes in a different sequence of priority. So, for example, in retailer one, the attribute which was most important to those consumers was actually the lifestyle, or better for you, healthiness kind of attributes. Whereas for other categories, for other retailers, sorry, different attributes had higher priority and therefore the appeal of different products and SKUs was quite different for each <coughs> of the different uh, retailers. So this um, chart actually shows us very clearly how the three Tiger Brands products were positioned relative to each other and relative to the competitor brands in retailer one. So you can see from the chart how um, the Orgel brand, the brand leader, pulls out very clearly and sits com completely separately on, on the chart and has its own unique set of appeals to the shoppers. You can also see how the Hugo brand, which is the value for money brand, also is a strong brand in this retailer and also pulls out quite separately from the Orgel brand and other brands. Whereas what we learned very clearly is that the Ku brand, which is the smaller bubble on, on the chart, is actually clustered quite close to one of our major competitors and was not really offering incremental or different appeals to what the main competitor was actually offering. We also learned that the premium brands offered very little differentiation. And you can see how they're all clustered together in one space and how for consumers they're actually quite interchangeable. So the shopper is really happy to pick any one of the premium brands on the shelf. And if you compare that picture to a different retailer, you can see how the brands reposition themselves completely. But once again, the clear message was that all gold pulls itself apart very clearly. Hugo pulls itself apart very clearly, and Ku is operating in a cluster of interchangeable brands. And so that really did assist us in answering those burning questions which I shared with you um, earlier. And the implementation of the answers to, to this burning question was really very clear to us. The first point was that by reducing the product SKUs by 37%, not necessarily only Tiger brand SKUs, but SKUs in the category, so that we could approach the retailers with their specific story and explain to them which SKUs on their shelf was really adding no extra value, it was really just completely interchangeable with other products on the shelf and that reducing SKUs by 37% would lead in the first place to category growth for the retailer of 1.1%, and for tiny brands, it would lead to growth of, increase, of in excess of, of 3%. The second thing, which is absolutely great, was that we learned that the new product idea was a very incremental contribution and would offer very unique attributes, actually across most of the retailers that we analyzed, and in total would give us the opportunity of an incremental $600,000 just in the jam category. Of course, the benefit to the retailer is decluttering his shelf, for us internally, decluttering our shelves, and we made the easy decision to discontinue the Ku brand in the jam sector less complicated merchandising so we're having much more efficiency much better stock turn and much better on shelf availability in the jam sector and more efficient distribution as well as uh, less complex complexity in our supply chain so we're in the midst of having implemented this um, strategy 
we have already seen incremental market share growth points and we are looking forward to answering our objective of greater growth and greater profits. It really was a great case study and a great learning for ourselves um, in partnership with IRI. Thanks, JC. <laughs>
as I said before, the uh, world is getting more and more complex. There's more and more data there. Now, an advice of something that I learned in the past. If you're thinking on a global consumer, uniform, standardized, you're thinking lowest common denominator. You don't win with lowest common denominator. We can debate that if you want back to it. That's my learning. You will go for the lowest common denominator. And now I'm going to introduce the villain of the story, the bad guy. In every good story, it has to be a bad guy. And the bad guy is fixed, rigid hierarchies. I learned that late in my career. <clears throat> Your CMK people, your market research people, your CMI people, even if you don't know, they operate with this. What is a hierarchy? A hierarchy is uh, like a pyramid in which you put all the SKUs, and then you put the brands or the sub brands, and then you put the manufacturers. And that is the view of the world through the eyes of the market researchers. It's a photo, it's a picture. But as I said, reality is a movie. So I'm going to bring you a real example. My first brand in my career when I was working at Procter & Gamble was a fantastic brand. It was called Wash & Go, a shampoo. That was my first one. At that time, I had more hair, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> now, you know what this challenge, the, the, the hierarchies, because it was not a shampoo, it was not a conditioner, so where do we put it? What do we do? And still a result. But the truth is that the consumer looks at hair care. They don't look at shampoo and conditioner. That is the problem of hierarchy. Let me give you another example. Imagine that you are a carbonated soft drink manufacturer. I don't know where to left. You can look at your hierarchy and say, hey, you know what? I am competing with every carbonated soft drink. And then you see the interactions of your company with your hierarchy. But if you're smarter, you know that every adult individual, on average, drinks two liters of liquid, a little bit more, per day. Then, your competitor is everything that you could drink. Then your competitor is water. Because if I drink more water, I will drink less of this. Your competitors are juices. But the hierarchies do not allow you to look at it this way. Bad guy. So, looking forward, the winners, what are they going to do? Three things. Three things. The first one, like in every good movie, you kill the bad guy. The attributes will kill hierarchies. If you put the hierarchies together, and then you actually decompose in the lowest element, which is the attributes, you can create your own hierarchy the way that you want to look at it. All hair care, all drinkable, all your store. All of a sudden, your hierarchy can be my store. And you will see the interactions of one into the other part of their store. Today, with the rigid hierarchies, you can run. First thing. Second thing. Already, and here is what <clears throat> one of the things also that I learned, learned of me in here. Boy, you know how much data is there? I mean, now imagine all the products in the store, all this amount of SKUs decomposing 300 hierarchies each of them. You know how much data is that? It's a huge amount of data. So, what you need is a super powerful IT platform <coughs> that actually can make these things work together. Because it's not only that. It is your store data, <clears throat> it's not only that, it's your consumer data, it's not only that, it's the cost of data, it's the weather, it's the economic data, it's your financial data. And you want all this data to talk to each other. When I was at Carrefour, <clears throat> my CEO at that time, Lars, so I don't know if he's in, in here, 
I know that he was attending Peter Schubert for he used to say, great sentence. If we only knew what we know. If we only knew what we know. And the truth is that I would challenge every retailer, that is your problem. The answer of your problems is inside, you know, but you don't know how to get it. So the second thing that you need is a super powerful platform that actually make talk all the data together. And the third thing that you will need <coughs> is make it easy. Make it fast. Easy. Because if it's not easy, it will not be used. Again, my experience is, hey, you know, I have such a great tools. They were so cumbersome and nobody, nobody wanted to use it. And it cost us a fortune, but and you were begging the people saying, hey, you know, it's great. No one to use it. Now I have seven kids. God bless them. The youngest one is less than two years old. She cannot talk. She still cannot talk. You know, it is amazing. You give her an iPad, she can find YouTube, Peppa Pig. <laughs> you make it easy, you make it use. Make it fast. Why fast? Because today, these days, you guys are going to meet your suppliers or your clients. You're going to meet with each other. You're going to have talk to talk. And you are going to talk about your categories and your brands. And you will be challenged about your own views of your own brands and your own categories by somebody that has a different view, but is real, legitimate. If you think hierarchies, to restate the hierarchies, it will take months, weeks perhaps, you will lose the negotiation that is happening. <coughs> you need something that is actually what we call on the fly, that gives you the answer on the fly. So with this, you're going to allow me to give you a small advertising break. How do we transform data into action? Number one, we have the largest and most integrated data sets in the industry. Number two, our technology platform is the most advanced. Number three, our prescriptive analytics offer clients real-world, real-time insights. It starts with our foundation the world's largest integrated set of big data. We call it the IRI Data Cloud, and it contains the most robust data sources. But how do we help our clients see meaning in it and generate insights they can act on in real time? A simple yet powerful cloud-based platform called IRI Liquid Data, or ILD. Let's take a quick deep dive into ILD. Its foundation is raw data from the IRI Data Cloud. Granular, adaptable, and flexible. Then there's Query, an in-memory layer that pulls from all the data sets in real time to aggregate and structure the outputs. The analytics layer has tens of thousands of pre-built measures, ready to use in hundreds of thousands of standard reports. It also supports thousands of different users at once. The visualization layer, called Unify, makes it easy for clients to see and access real-time data in any IRI solution through a single access point, connecting the right information to the right user on any device. In just seconds, clients can create reports or access a collection of reports that build an analytics story. Finally, the applications layer helps clients solve a multitude of complex business issues with speed and precision by tapping into more than 20 ILD-based applications. The world's largest and most integrated data sets, leading technology and our prescriptive analytics work seamlessly to uncover and deliver new growth to our clients. IRI is growth delivered. So in closing, and a summary, what do we need to grow and win in the future? Three things. The data. You need to observe and to understand the, rea the reality. You need to have all the access to this data. The second thing, you need to transform this data into knowledge. You need to transform the data into knowledge. And for that, you need a super powerful integration platform. And the, thing, and the third thing is you need to integrate, you have to transform that knowledge into action. And act fast. Faster, guarantee, than your competitors. The data, the knowledge, the action. Thank you very much.
the timer is telling me that we have some time for questions. Uh, I thought that there was going to be uh, something here for the questions, but I guess that you know, I see the gentleman coming with a microphone, so you have some questions, please. Um, the difficult questions, Brenda will answer. The easy questions are. <laughs>